uh, this is a look at historic risk rates, essentially. Uh, you're looking at the VIX index, which gives you a sense of uncertainty in the financial markets. You can see periods in our history, and you can also see that where we are today is at, at an all-time high during the coronavirus. We've never seen uh, uncertainty this high. Uh, we've never seen the VIX index, if you will, as, a, as our proxy for uncertainty at this level. And you can see how it compares to some past events. So uh, clearly we're in unprecedented times today and we're, we're working through that. And probably all of us have felt that feeling where time seems to separate, where you feel like you're living in the present, but you're also focused on both the, the past as well as the future, and it's kind of all happening simultaneously. And when that uncertainty starts to unfold, I think it's a great time to, to employ some of the tools that we have for thinking about uncertainty. What I would like to argue is that all of these changes that we are experiencing that feel like inflection points are actually really accelerations. They were already things that were in motion and that this event and series of events accelerated those in time. And so that's some of the disequilibrium that we feel and so around some of these uncertainties is that the, these movements that were already in motion, that were already taking place, accelerated. Uh, I like to say about technology that it moves slowly until suddenly it doesn't. And that's what we found throughout not just technology, but throughout a number of industries, that things that were slowly already in motion began to accelerate. Uh, it, it reminds me of the Mark Twain quote, uh, the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. So we have this feeling that some things have, have changed very, very quickly and won't go back to the way that they were or that will uh, kind of enter a, a new normal. But in many ways, I think we were already on, it, at least with many of these things, this trajectory. We're already moving in this direction and it's just started to accelerate what was already taking place. The first tool that I wanna highlight is what we call the axis of, of uncertainty. And so what you're doing here is you're trying to characterize the uncertainty that exists. And I think one of the things we, we feel, one of the things organizations feel is fear around some of that uncertainty and the volatility that comes with that uncertainty. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna catalog as many uncertainties as we can come up with. So this is a great exercise uh, that you can do by yourself, but also I think it's a good exercise to do with your team and with your, your entire organization if you can. You want as many different voices and different perspectives as, as you can get because you wanna be able to really capture all of the possible uncertainties. I like to catalog them around what I call STEP, so society, technology, economy, and, and politics. And again, you wanna just really list as many as you can. I've included a couple of these here. And actually what I, I did is I went back and I looked at some of the forecasts that were being published at the end of last year and the beginning of next year. As we looked out at 2020, Here's some of the uncertainties that existed. It's kind of funny to look at some of these and see what's transpired over the last couple of weeks. These were some of the uncertainties that we saw at the beginning of the year, just uh, four months ago. You can also include other categories. If there's other categories that are of interest to you, you can include those. So one of the things I've done here is I've highlighted uncertainty around COVID-19, there's a lot of uncertainties and how that will play out over the, the next year, whether we'll have large scale testing available, how social distancing will evolve, uh, whether schools will reopen in the fall, is there a second wave? And the way you wanna think about these uncertainties is you wanna be really open-ended and open-minded. Tool number two that I'm gonna highlight is just building scenarios. If you're familiar with a scenario planning, that's what this tool is. That the last tool really is an, almost an input into scenario planning. It's a way of characterizing those uncertainties just to help you wrap your mind around what those uncertainties look like and the implications for those uncertainties. But one of the things you might do then once you have those, that two by two matrix built, 
and you have those headlines created is you then feed them into a scenario map and you start to characterize what does that look like, similar to, to what we just did. So you can start to think about first step, what does that environment look like? What does that scenario look like? Here's just some simple questions that you might ask as you build out that scenario. Work through the step analysis. So what are the social implications? What, are, what happens to technology? What does the economy look like in that particular environment? And then what's your customer look like in that future state? Who are they? How do they interact with you? What are their values and what do they value in that particular environment? How does their behavior change if that environment were to play out? What does the economy look like in that future state? What would have to be true in order for that to happen? And so those are the type of questions that I think you want to be asking. What would have to be true in order for that to happen? Tool number three that I thought I would highlight is what I call a pre-mortem. So we're familiar with post-mortems. And what tends to happen in a post-mortem is you're looking at why something failed after the fact. What we do in a pre-mortem is we look at why something failed before it failed. So you essentially take a prod project and you assume that it failed. You assume in advance that it is going to fail. And then you start to figure out if it did fail, if you made that assumption and you took that as given that the project or the initiative failed, what caused it to fail? So here are some of those steps that you might take if you were going to do a pre-mortem on a new initiative with your team. You might, uh, first you want to ensure that everybody in the team has a clear understanding of what the initiative is. So they understand what you're trying to accomplish, what you plan to launch. This could be, again, a new service. It could be a new product. Then you want to fast forward to the demise of that project. And you want to make the assumption that that initiative failed. And then you want to start to brainstorm ideas around what caused it to fail. What, again, what would have to be true in order for that project to fail? We tend to go into new initiatives and new projects with confidence. We want them to succeed. Otherwise, obviously, we wouldn't pursue them. And so we tend to be overconfident in the ability for those projects to, to be successful. So by fast forwarding and taking as given that the project failed, it allows us to deconstruct what caused it to fail. Then from there, you can prioritize the risks and you can start to build and implement mitigation strategies.